Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. How many of you remember a very basic, simple game you played as a child? In my case, it was knock hockey. It's a simple game where you have a, in those cases, it was a wooden stick. You have a puck. You knock it against the side of a rail and you attempt to hit it into the goal on the other side. You take turns playing against your friend. I spent hundreds of hours on this simple game with no electronics that you didn't plug in. I made the game in industrial arts class. So I'm old enough to remember that you had three choices in seventh grade in elementary school. You could take typing, home economics, or industrial arts, which is basically wood shop. So I took wood shop. We're going to update the knock hockey game a bit today with 3D printed corners, and I'll show you why I designed them this way, 3D printed pucks and sticks, and some simple pieces of wood you can buy at any lumber yard. You don't need a saw or fancy equipment to assemble this. You can buy the wood pre-cut and print what you need on your 3D printer. So stay tuned and let's learn how to build a game that will provide your children and grandchildren with hundreds of hours of low-tech fun. I have two assistants with me. I have my niece, Emily, and my granddaughter, Shira. Knock hockey is a very, very simple game. The goal is to hit the puck by angling it off the sides, by banking it off the sides, into your opponent's goal. Each player takes one shot at a time. There is a line in the middle that divides the play field into two sides. When you first start the game, you start with a face-off in the middle, and the goal is to move the puck to your side of the line, and then you get to go first. Okay, Emily, Shira, let's do a face-off. Hockey one, hockey two, hockey three. Oh. Okay, Shira, it's your turn. Oh! oh! So Shira just scored a goal, and Emily has to, is there another puck yeah, here? Okay, so there's another puck here. So since Shira go scored, Emily gets a free shot from her side. Now, in some versions of the game, there are actually face-off circles uh, placed on the field. In versions that don't have that, Emily is allowed to put the puck anywhere she wants to take her next shot. Okay, now that we've watched Emily and Shira play knock hockey a bit, let's flash back to a couple days ago and look at how to assemble this from a sheet of two foot by four foot plywood, two four foot long one by threes, four nine inch long one by threes, and a series of 3D printed parts. To get started, let's do an inventory of the parts we need. The first set of parts you'll need is you'll need four corner brackets that are 3D printed. I will link below links to the Thingiverse model for these. These are used to attach the corners of your game together. And not only does it attach the corners together, but it also provides a beveled and angled surface so that the puck, when hit along the side, will continue to roll. It won't get stuck in the corner. These are designed in such a way that the tolerances are rather loose. You have a lot of flexibility. Uh, if they're a little bit too big, a little bit too small, this will still work. Now, this wasn't the first design I made. The first design I made looked like this. And when I went to assemble it, I realized that the puck would hit this lip here. Now, when I printed this first design, I printed it very fast with very little fill. So it's very weak because there's no plastic inside. But that was fine so that I could test whether it would fit properly. Once I went to print the final piece, I printed it with 30% fill, which makes it much, much stronger. 
Now, in addition to these four corner brackets, you're going to need two squares, which are used to protect the goals on the two sides, and we'll see how those work. Then you're going to need six pieces of wood. These are dimensional lumber. That means you walk into a hardware store or lumber store and they're already cut. Here in the United States, these are called one by threes. Uh, the dimensions will be slightly different outside of North America. They're four feet long. You need two of these. These are also one by threes. These are nine inches long. I'm using imperial measurements because at least here in America, that's what you'd ask for in the lumber store. These are going to be the two end pieces. These are going to be your front and back side. Now, in addition to that, you will be printing uh, a couple hockey sticks and a few pucks in case they get lost. Okay, let me zoom out now and let's look at how you would go about assembling this. The assembly of your knock hockey set will be easier if you have a power drill. You'll use that for drilling pilot holes with a small drill bit in order to make it easier to put the screws in. And you'll use it also for driving the screws in. Now, in addition, you'll need two size screws. A smaller screw, um, I'm using six by one inch screws, size six by one inch screws. These are relatively small to hold the plastic corner pieces in place. And then I'm using deck screws these are seven by one and five eighths to hold the rails to the plywood. This is half inch plywood, two feet by four feet. So you want your screw to be big enough so that it goes through the plywood and into the rails. I'm using deck screws just because they're really easy to work with. They're a very coarse screw. They drive very easy into the lumber. Now, you could use a series of specialized wood clamps to clamp this together before screwing. You could screw and glue this. In fact, gluing and screwing would be a great idea. You know, this is a very quick project. So I'm just going to screw it together very quickly. I'm gonna assume that maybe you don't have fancy clamps. We're gonna use blue painter's tape as our clamp. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this board over so the front surface is facing down. I'm going to put it on table where I can take and I can align one of my rails. Now in order to align that rail properly, I'm going to stick another rail underneath so it is flat because if it's on an angle, it'll make it harder to align. Then I'm going to align this first rail with the edge here. If you're using construction grade lumber, it is likely it will be slightly warped. Don't worry, these deck screws are strong enough to pull it into place. So I'm gonna get the middle nice and flush here, line this up, and then I'm gonna use some painter's tape, masking tape, to hold it in place so that it will stay aligned while I'm screwing it together. I'm going to double check that the ends are properly aligned. Remember the rule when working in woodworking at all is always measure twice, cut once. And now I'm going to drill a little pilot hole in here to make it easier to drive a screw. So I'm going to take my driver here. I'm going to put into my drill driver, I'm going to put a very small bit and we'll take and put a small hole in here quickly. There we go. Now I'm going to replace that with a screw bit. And I'm going to use a feature on a good drill driver that there's a series of numbers along the side. And if you turn this, to a number that will set the amount of torque that will be put on the screw before the driver will try stop trying to drive the screw in. If you set this all the way to the drill bit want setting, you could potentially split your lumber because it'll just keep going. So we're gonna start at, oh, I don't know, about nine or 10. 
on this particular unit. I'm going to take one of my deck screws, line it up, and let's take and slowly take and put it in with a series of slow motions. So you hear that ratchet, ratcheting sound? That says it's all the way in. Okay, so we have our first one in. Now I'm going to check the side and put a pilot hole in. Okay, now that we have the two rails on, we can flip this over and it will be much easier to work on. So now we're going to put these end pieces on. In order to make it easier, we're going to put the plastic components on first, then we will flip it over and put some supporting screws in. I'm going to line this up with the back and the side. and. Once again, I'm going to put in some pilot holes. Okay, now that I have the corners on, uh, let's flip this over and put screws in from the back. Once again, I'm going to make sure it's aligned properly and then drill pilot holes. And we'll put two in each of these. On the back here I'm using the deck screws and we'll need to crank the ratchet back up to about number 10. Okay I'm putting in the last two screws now. to flip this over and now we have our hockey table all ready to go except that if you're taking turns here the way this is set up now you could just shoot this directly into the opening and so to make this game a little bit more challenging the way it's always set up is you have a blocker square that's in front of each hole that means that you really can't, except for this very corner, if you get it just right, you always have to angle this off of a sidewall to get it in. The dimensions for this, which I discovered with trial and error, are about six inches out, or that would be about 150 millimeters out from the center of this hole. Now I'm going to attach these uh, a really a rather simple way. I'm going to use some spray adhesive. Uh, you could use and probably uh, you could use epoxy to attach this. You might be able to use double stick tape. You could potentially put a screw from this into the backer board, but you don't want to go too far down since it's only a half inch. So we'll try for right now with a bit of double of this adhesive. We'll put some on there. And we'll put a little bit of adhesive on here also. Because the way this adhesive works best is if you put it on both surfaces, you allow it to dry a bit, and then adhere it while it's still tacky. So that would mean now. I'm going to line that up. And now we're going to line this one up. 
looks about right. And now we're going to wait for a little bit, let that dry, and then we will come back and give our knock hockey set a try and uh, recap what we've learned by putting this all together. Well, folks, I hope you learned something watching me assemble the knock hockey game. This is a really good example of the integration of 3D printing, where we printed the sticks, the pucks, the corners, the blocks, and other materials, in this case wood, that you buy at the lumberyard. To refresh, you need two four-foot-long 1x3s, you need four 9-inch 1x3s, you need a sheet of plywood or masonite or some other material that's, a pro that's two feet by four feet. You need a handful of screws and probably a electric, a powered screwdriver drill. You don't need a saw to build this at all. Now, every time you build something like this, you learn things. So my um, expert testers, uh, which included a couple of my grandchildren, some nieces and nephews, my son, um, have decided that the angle on these st sticks need to be a little bit steeper and the blade probably should be a little shorter. In addition, next time we print this, we might make the angles on the corners a little bit wider. So one of the wonderful things about 3D printing objects is it's really easy to do them again, to improve them, to go from prototype to, in our case, production for our family game. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm going to include links to both these models and the original Tinkercad model so you can play with these and modify these on your own. Please leave comments if you make modifications so everyone can gain from your experience. Thanks so much. Let's continue to learn things together.